For today's Grib Adventure, we find ourselves in Kensington, London. We're going to be visiting the house where Freddie Mercury, the lead singer to the band Queen, lived and where he died. And then from here, we're going to go to a place that not many people know about, but a few people believe is where you'll find the final resting place of Freddie Mercury. We're going to talk about all that, but first, the house. Now, I don't know if you noticed, there are leaves here. They're not as crunchy because it's been raining, but Jessica noticed them. And of course, when she sees leaves, she jumps in them. <laughs> You're too cute. Now, like I said, we are in the Kensington area of London. Beautiful little spot. And then you see this giant wall with this fence on the left-hand side of the screen. This is what's known as Garden Lodge. This is where Freddie Mercury lived and died. It's a beautiful little home behind the wall. I wish we could see it. I'm gonna show you some pictures. You can't jump that high, baby ghoul. <laughs> now, there were photos taken of Freddie Mercury, the last days of his, of his life, that were taken in the garden behind this wall. pretty wild standing here. Now what's crazy about this, throughout time, ever since his death, people would come here, they would leave flowers, they would leave notes. Graffiti everywhere. And all of that has changed. I'm sure people come out here like on the anniversary and leave, you know, flowers for his birthday and his death day. But there are signs that say graffiti is a crime, CCTV an operation, and it is private property. Oh, there it is. Garden Lodge. Now, if you know anything about Queen or the life of Freddie Mercury, then you know what a life he's lived. I mean, they even made a movie about it called Bohemian Rhapsody. Now, here's the thing. As crazy as his life seemed, or as crazy as his life was, he really cherished his private life. And Sadly, he died November 24th, 1991, here at his house at Garden Lodge. And his final resting place has been the topic of discussion or debate or curiosity ever since he died. Queen said tonight they were planning a big musical event dedicated to their lead singer, Freddie Mercury, who died last night of AIDS. There have been tributes to his talent and his courage from friends and from fans. The health minister, Mrs. Virginia Bottomley, predicted his death would have a big impact in preventing the spread of AIDS. One of the most flamboyant rock stars of his generation, Freddie Mercury was extravagant in everything he did. With early hits like Bohemian Rhapsody, he and Queen created a whole new medium. The pop video was born. He was also a master of the big event, drawing crowds to live shows all over the world. In his private life, he made no secret of his love affairs with both men and women. He'd known for two years that he had AIDS, but had kept it quiet, living the life of a recluse in his five million pound mansion in West London, where fans have been paying their tributes. He only admitted publicly that he had AIDS the day before he died, when he also appealed to his fans to help combat the disease. When Freddie Mercury died in 1991, his cause of death is listed as bronchial pneumonia resulting from AIDS. And he was cremated, and he pretty much left everything to his girlfriend, well, one-time girlfriend and longtime friend, Mary Austin, including his ashes whenever he was cremated. And she swore to never tell anybody when, where, and if she were to scatter his ashes. It's crazy to think that at one point there are all kinds of posters and pictures and letters and graffiti all over this wall and the door. And this is how it looks now. It's crazy, right? Now I'm really battling the light here because the sun is directly behind the house, but that, the garden lodge, that was the front door. Now there's another door that a lot of people, a lot of fans come here and flock to to get pictures of. 
And that's down here at the far end of the property. This was the studio door. Today it says deliveries because there are people still living here. And I, I heard, I don't know, I, I didn't look up on it, but I think Mary Austin still lives here. At least that's what I read. Where do you think there should be a memorial? I don't know. I I wish it, there will be one somewhere. Just somewhere. I wish the the person who responsible the we'll just hurry up and get one all going. It's been a long time and even the poorest of the poor have one. So it's that time he has one too. Today I think I was still with him. I didn't leave here till about one last year. And so for me, I'm still there holding his hand. Um, it won't be until, I think, seven this evening when I receive the phone call that it will be, it will hit her. Mary, can you just stand this way, please? Mary. Same as any one of us, I suppose. Thank you. You guys have done it hard, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. And we all know how we feel. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> At least we can empathise. Good on you, Mary. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks for coming out to see you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. Ciao, Mary. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh. <laughs> 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 I know, it's ridiculous. Well, I'll arrange them later. <laughs> Come in, sir. Susie. Okay. Come in. Stop Excuse, please. Susie, quick. Come back out for a minute. All right. Thanks. I know it's not exactly the most opportune time. I know, love. All right. Now here's the great mystery. Ever since Freddie Mercury's death, fans from all over the world come here to pay their respects, to visit where Freddie Mercury lived and died and wrote some of his music. Again, there was a studio attached to this place. And every single one of them wants to know where did Freddie Mercury's ashes end up? Now, Mary Austin, she's in possession of the ashes. And again, she said that she would never tell somebody, she would never tell anybody when, where, and if she scatters them. I do believe there's an article at some point, correct me if I'm wrong, she did say that she did put them someplace or scatter them someplace and she kind of had to do it in secrecy so nobody would follow her. Some say it's in Zanzibar, some say it's in the garden, some people even say that it's in a, an urn above the, fi the, the mantle of the fireplace. But here's the thing. They could actually be in a cemetery here in London. This is going to blow your mind. Bohemian Rhapsody is being re-released and all royalties will go to the AIDS charity, the Terence Higgins Trust. The announcement about Queen's greatest hit came as friends and family bade their farewells to Freddie Mercury. In life, Freddie Mercury said he didn't have any real friends. At his funeral, they had to employ extra security to keep them away. Dozens of floral tributes had been arriving all morning. Amongst them, one from David Bowie. Will be missed, it said, echoing the sentiments of thousands of fans. 
In life so flamboyant, in death understated, his coffin born into the chapel bearing a single red rose. A short service featuring the music of Montserrat Caballé was conducted according to Freddy's Persian Zoroastrian faith. The congregation joining with priests in prayer and chanting. The news of Freddie's death from AIDS stunned the world, but none more so than the other members of Queen, there to mourn the loss of the man they call the greatest and most beloved member of our family. They were joined by Elton John and close friend Mary Austin with Dave Clark, the man who witnessed Freddie, as he put it, going to sleep. And as ever, the loyal fans, there to pay their last respects. He's rock and roll, he always has been. He always will be, even though he's now dead. Queen will, Queen will never be again. But their music will live on, I don't care what anybody says. Right now we're walking through Kensal Green Cemetery looking for what many people believe is the final resting place, the grave of Freddie Mercury. Now what's really interesting about this cemetery is about 15 minutes away from where Freddie Mercury lived and died. And when he died, that building right there, that's where he was cremated. Now the mystery goes a little deeper. Usually whenever we try to find a grave, we turn to findagrave.com. Now here's the fun thing about this. It is listed that there is a marker here for a Freddie Mercury, but it doesn't really tell you where it is. It doesn't pinpoint it with like a GPS coordinate. So we're just kind of walking around and doing our best at trying to find it. We're starting to think that at some point somebody came out here and stole the faceplate. Really hope not. But it's starting to look like that. Now this could very well have been a fever dream of some sort, but I could have sworn I read an article in preparation for this that Mary Austin, Freddie Mercury's close friend, one-time girlfriend, stated, made a statement that she did scatter his ashes or she put them someplace. And I, I vaguely remember something in the article about how she kind of had to sneak the urn out of the house and nobody would ask where she was going. So it only makes sense that 15 minutes away is where they are living, where he was living, where he died. And then if she were to kind of sneak away from the house, come up here to the cemetery where Freddie Mercury was cremated and scatter his ashes, it would make sense that he was here and not someplace like in Zanzibar or some other place. He did say that his wishes were he never wanted to be found. Like, scattered asses somewhere, put him somewhere that was just as private in death as in real life. Follow? Looking at pictures online, it appears that right next to the crematorium there are some statues, if you will, that kind of resemble his. We walked past them earlier. We didn't see his name, which is why we think that it was stolen. We're gonna go back there and kind of look at everything again. Again, right over here, that's where he was cremated. I love that there's little pathways through the cemetery. And then off in the distance, you can see progress being made, new buildings. So right down here and to the right. Down in this little area. Well, we have some sad news. It looks like the memorial plate for Freddie Mercury has been stolen, or at the very least, the cemetery removed it so nobody would steal it once it was found out. But a couple years ago, somebody walking through the cemetery noticed a plate. Now you can see these three posts right here, and they have these metal sliders. They slide in and slide out. You can see Jessica moving one off in the distance. And it turns out that whenever somebody's cremated here and you scatter the ashes in the scattering area, you'll find plates like this. Now, this is where it gets really sad. Somebody did come out here, they did a video. Uh, you can see this one up here, Jessica was just touching it, it's broken, so somebody 
broken or something to get Freddie Mercury's plate out. But somebody did come out here a couple years ago. They did a video, it's got a couple million views on it. And we are able to track down, I'm gonna go ahead and get in here. You can see names like this, Cornelius. Who else on here, Baby Gold? Cornelius Blaze, Patrick and Maria, and Ron Clark. So right over here next to these folks is where Freddie Mercury's plate used to be. It's gone. Wow. Oddly, there are no cameras back here, but you can see somebody busted it and removed it. Oh, brother. Now, there's always the possibility that the cemetery did remove the plaque so it wouldn't get stolen. Fingers and bones crossed, that's what, they, that's what happened. But this is how the plaque looked whenever it was found. In loving memory of Farrakh, Basara, and think I'm saying that correctly, that was Freddie Mercury's real name. He chose Freddie Mercury once Queen started performing in the early 70s. And the dates match up, his birth date, his death date, November 24th, 1991. And then there's a French quote here. Now, I'm not gonna pretend to know what it says, but it does translate to, always to be close to you with all my love. And if you look down at the very bottom, how interesting, it's signed with a single letter, M, which could very well mean Mary Austin, Freddie Mercury's close friend and one-time girlfriend. It's crazy, right? Could this cemetery be the final resting place of Freddie Mercury? It could very well be. With that being said, Thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time telling the story of one of rock's most legendary performers, Freddie Mercury himself from Queen. Until next time, happy Halloween.